So one of the exciting newest features, in my opinion, on uh, the arouser is the soft clipping feature. Um, it's kind of labeled underneath of it as saturation. So instead of um, on the distressor, you know, you can select uh, your distortion type, you know, two, three, however you want to set that. And then best case scenario is cranking your input, dropping your output, you know, and then as you get the attack slower and slower, it seems like it'll uh, distort more and more. And it sounds really cool. Um, I've done it a lot with snares and stuff, for instance, to kind of distort and saturate them some. But this simplifies the entire process. The default setting here at four, uh, where it'll reset back to, this is roughly where the distressor is fixed and functions at. So this is gonna be the closest you're gonna get to the hardware. Um, now you do have the ability here to actually drop it down and make it cleaner. So if you know you got stuff pushing really hard through here, uh, you don't want that distortion in there. You can drop it and make the signal cleaner, or you can go just the opposite and get it dirtier and dirtier if you want to. Um, over here on the left, these are actually um, LEDs. I thought at first they might have been little button selection, something like that. Nothing like that. They're just LEDs kind of telling you the territory you are into. I did a couple examples. Um, one was on a, a bass guitar and another on a vocal, which is um, really common places where I would add um, this type of an effect in there. The bass, I couldn't find a track that I was working on to where I could really show off the drive or anything on the bass track. Um, I found a track uh, where I could get a little bit of it in there to um, push the bass, let it stand out a little more during an active bass part. You can see here on the mix, I did of course have to tweak the mix again, crank the bass up, and just to make the point a little more pronounced, I did saturate it more than what I would have normally wanted to in the mix, but you can definitely hear the difference. So, and then I also did a vocal part. This is pretty heavy stuff here, so I'll go ahead and warn you now. But um, this is a place where I would use uh, distortion and saturation a lot, and I like that real natural kind of distortion for it. You know, I don't want to use like a guitar simulator, something like that to do this effect. So um, I was really able to take this and kind of push it into this real ugly, distorted territory. Um, I would typically put it on an auxiliary and feed the vocals to it. But for example reasons, I found it kind of difficult um, without doing a lot of jumping around to A, B stuff and that type of thing. So in this scenario, I just inserted it on the vocal and then kind of jumped back and forth a little bit to let you hear the differences. So. Might want to turn down a little bit, but you've been warned, so. Hey, and down here we also have a variable uh, detection circuit. So not only is our high pass filter on the detection circuit variable, as well as we have a full uh, parametric EQ variable circuit along with a boost and a cut. 
Uh, for those of you not familiar with detection circuits, uh, this doesn't affect uh, the EQ or the audio going through the circuit. It only affects how the compressor uh, will react to the incoming signal. So for instance, if the high pass filter is set to say, you know, roughly 70 uh, hertz here, uh, the compressor will ignore any frequencies um, that are less than 70 hertz the parametric EQ in the detection circuit is similar in operation, but it's also more complex. Uh, you can specify the exact frequency you want, um, select a bandwidth, so how many frequencies around that particular frequency you would like um, it to be reactive on. And then you can select it to either boost, um, which would make it more reactive to that frequency, or you can select it to cut, which would make it less reactive um, to that given frequency. Now, of course, again, it will compress, you know, all the audio, all frequencies running through the compressor. This is just saying what frequencies it's gonna be uh, more reactive, more responsive to, that's gonna actually trigger the compression. All in all, this is a killer software version of a tool many of us have known and used for many years. Uh, it retains what I liked about the Distressor personally, uh, the giant knobs, everything's easy to see, clean layout. Um, it's easy to use, lots of options, but it's not too complex, um, and it's just easy to get good sounds out of it. Um, with this, I found it very similar, um, except with more tools, more things to work with on it, except again, there's more tools, but it's not more confusing. Um, the attack modification, especially on drums, I'm really enjoying a lot. Um, the saturation, I expect I'll be using quite a bit. Um, it just makes it more versatile, and now with the... Um, variables in the detection circuit for the sidechain EQ, um, it becomes a lot more versatile and usable as well. And then of course we all like a blend knob on our compressor, so I'm not sad about that either. But all in all, I'm really happy and quite impressed with it. Um, I look forward to uh, what Empirical Labs does next, uh, whether that be other plugins, updating this, um, what they have coming down the pipeline, I really look forward to. So thanks for watching the video and feel free to contact us with any questions, comments, or anything else. Thank you.